Here's the deal, guys. I want to set this up and get out to fly. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps because my policy is pretty much anything I do with regards to quads, make a video about it. Someone out there can benefit from it. But I'm going to try and rein in my tendency to just uh, explain every step as if you had just freaking emerged from your mother's womb and didn't know a damn thing and just go a little quicker and see if I can get some packs in before it gets dark out. So number one, we're going to open up the DJI Assistant app. If this is your first DJI quad, go download it. Link in the video description. If this is not your first DJI quad, then you've done this before. You should do this with every DJI Air Unit or Vista that you get. Always plug it in. Activate it. You got to or it won't work. Actually, it will work. You just not. China won't know anything about you. <laughs> We're going to activate it and you're going to update the firmware. And that is really important. You got to update the firmware uh, so that if you, everything is on the, because DJI is always putting new stuff in the firmware and it's always good. So we're going to plug in USB, boop, and we're going to plug in a battery. It doesn't really matter what order you do those things. A short while later, you will see the device appear. We will activate, we will confirm our account. We will, you do not need to take the survey. It's gonna ask you to take a survey. You don't need to do that, that's not mandatory. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna to update to the latest firmware, which you always should. DJI has released so many amazing new features in their firmwares. It's like each time I'm like, oh, they fixed that problem that always bugged me and they added this new feature. You should be checking for new DJI firmwares regularly because it's not like, well, we fixed a bug and that's about it. Don't be excited. Like, we added 50 megabit per second mode. You can now see twice as many blades of grass and insects. And wow. I'll be back when this is done. It's going to take a minute. All right, once the thing has rebooted, the next thing that I'm gonna do is bind the air unit, the goggles, and the controller together. You need to do the goggles first and then the controller. For some reason, when you do the goggles, it wipes the controller from the air unit's memory. Don't know why. Once we've got a solid green light on the air unit, we'll press the bind button one time with a little pokey stick. The LED will go red. And once the goggles have finished starting up, we'll press the bind button on it one time. There we go. And we should now have image and we do. Fantastic. Then on the controller to put it in bind mode, we'll push the record button, this face button, and we'll click in on this jog wheel all at the same time. It'll go blue and we'll press the bind button on the air unit one more time. Okay, now the air unit, the goggles and the controller are all bound and on the latest firmware. Let's start up Betaflight and see what the situation is there. Next, I'm gonna plug in USB, this time on the flight controller, not on the air unit. It's an easy mistake for people to make. Betaflight's gonna connect. If you don't know how to download and install Betaflight, I've got a video about how to do that. There'll be a link in the video description to that video. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to the receiver tab and I'm gonna grab my controller here. here let's move this quad out of the way. So you can... And I'm gonna move the sticks and see that the correct channel moves. Oh no, we are, we don't have any movement in the receiver tab. Dang damn it. Okay, I bet I know why. So the first reason why I think this might not be working is that the protocol used to talk between the air unit and the flight controller, which is called SBUS, it has two versions, a fast and a normal or slow version. And you change in the goggles, whether it's on fast SBUS or normal SBUS. And if the flight controller isn't prepared for that, 
if they don't match up, then you won't get any movement in the receiver tab. Um, I've gone to the command line in Betaflight, and it looks like SBUS baud fast is set to off. If you did need to change that, the way you would do it would be you would type set SBUS underscore baud underscore fast equals on, and then you would type save. And that is really what you want to do. It'll give you a lower latency connection, and that's certainly desirable. So let's change that both in the CLI and in the goggles. So we got fast SBUS on in the goggles and on in the flight controller with no dice. What's going on here? What's going on here, folks? Has this thing come with a crossfire receiver? It has not. Let's look in the configuration tab and see. Yeah, it's set for crossfire. But I don't think it shipped with a crossfire receiver. I mean, I wish, I wish it had. It definitely does not have a crossfire receiver. No, that's where it would be, and it is not. Okay, so they've shipped me one set for Crossfire, but I've got uh, S bus. I don't have a Crossfire receiver, so we're going to use the air unit. So here in the Configuration tab, we're going to change this from Crossfire to S bus, and we'll hit Save and Reboot in the lower right. And it probably won't fix it all by itself, but let's find out. Go to the Receiver tab. There we go. We got movement. So we lucked out uh, that the UART number used for the serial receiver was set correctly. It's just the protocol was not set. So now we go to the receiver tab and you can see that my quadcopter is flipping out. And the reason for that is that the channel mapping is not right. Look, I'm going to move the throttle. But when I move the throttle, the pitch channel moves. When I move the yaw, yaw is correct. When I move, yeah pitch the roll channel moves when I roll the throttle channel moves. I'm just going to try, T. this is our channel mapping, T-A-E-R. I'm just going to try a different channel mapping and see if that works. A lot of times one of these two defaults will be correct. Throttle, yes. Yaw, correct. Roll, correct. Pitch, correct. Great. My channel mapping is right. I am good uh, to go there. Let's see. Since we're not using Crossfire, we don't need that. I'll check my endpoints. Throttle is 1,000 to 2,000. Yaw is not quite 1,000 to 2,000, but close enough. 2,000 to 1,000 ish and 1,000 to 2,000. So, since my endpoints are correct, I'm going to take this stick low threshold and set it to as close to 1,000 as I can get it while leaving just the minimum amount of space. So, the throttle goes to 1,000. We'll set the stick low threshold just a little higher than that to 1010. And that will get rid of some dead band at the bottom of the throttle. Let's see what else is going on here. I'm probably going to leave most of this alone, but let's just at least check it out. Um, Bidirectional D shot is enabled. So we are doing RPM filtering. The arming angle is set to 180. That's good. Um, that let the quad arm even when it's not perfectly flat and level. That's how I prefer it. The motor beepers are enabled. Since there isn't a beeper installed on this quad, uh, if you were to lose it in the tall grass or something, you might have trouble finding it again. Uh, by enabling these D-Shot beacon configuration options, the motors will beep when the quad gets lost. And even though it doesn't have a buzzer installed on it, you'll still be able to hear it beeping and find it. Uh, in case you didn't know, when you first plug in and you hear doot 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 doot, that's the motors. The ESC uses the motor basically as a speaker coil to make that sound. Failsafe is set to GPS rescue. And that means that when you fail safe, the quadcopter will attempt to fly home. It does have a GPS built into it. So it has the option to try to do that. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that if anything goes wrong with GPS rescue, then the quad will fall out of the air. It won't, there's no fail back for GPS rescue. And that's fine. If you've had a fail safe, you might not have any other options, right? If you fail safe, well, you're going to lose it one way or the other. So you may as well try to do GPS rescue and fly home. Um, but if you activate GPS rescue manually using a switch on the controller and the, any of what they call the sanity checks fail, then the quad will just fall out of the air, which like maybe you like the option to just say, oh, never mind, that was a bad idea. 
So for example, if the quadcopter doesn't have a locked home position because you took off before you had enough satellites locked, take a look down here at the minimum satellites is five. If you take off before the GPS locks five satellites and then you try and activate GPS rescue, Will the quadcopter go, nah, nah, uh, you keep flying. I'm not going to do it. I don't have enough satellites. No, it'll just fall out of the sky. Um, what you can do is you can turn the sanity checks to fail safe only. And what that'll do is if you try to activate GPS rescue and a sanity check fails, GPS rescue will still try to activate. And if anything goes wrong, like the quad tries to fly to the moon, it's on you to disarm, to disable or disarm, disable GPS rescue, or disarm the quad. Um, the alternative is it just falls out of the sky. Have I said that enough times? The two sanity checks you need to be aware of are the minimum satellites. You need to have this many satellites before you arm. And the uh, distance to home, you need to be at least 100 meters away from home. The other thing I want to do is, let's save and reboot. The other thing I want to do is go to the CLI and... Oh, that's too many. There we go. So this parameter here, I'm going to type set GPS rescue allow arm, damn it, arming without fix equals on and save. What that's going to do is it's going to let me take off even if I don't have enough satellites locked. It gives me the option to decide, I don't want to wait. I'm just going to fly some freestyle. Uh, but if you take off without this, the fix, be aware that GPS rescue simply won't work. And you need, to, you need to be aware of that. Or you could just leave that option at the default, and then you will be unable to take off without the minimum number of satellites locked. The place where we set up the flight modes is here in the goggle. We're going to go to settings. Then we're going to go down to uh, remote controller. And then we're going to go to function mode. And here we can set the functions arm, turtle mode, and angle mode for each of these switches. Now you'll notice that not all of the modes we wanna set up, like GPS rescue mode, isn't in there. We're gonna to need to set that up in Betaflight. In fact, let's just set all of them up here in Betaflight. So let's just go to the receiver tab and let's just see which switches are set up to do anything. Looks like this left-hand shoulder switch is aux one. This switch is aux two, aux three, and aux four. Okay, great, that's gonna make it really freaking simple. One, two, three, four. Um, we'll go to the modes tab and I want aux one to be my arming mode and that's fine. We've got arm as pulled towards us and disarmed as pushed away. And you can see that as this tick mark moves, it highlights, uh, when the tick mark goes into this position, into this range, the arming mode becomes active. I'm going to change that. I like to have push away, be armed and pulled towards, be disarmed. That's just how I've always done it. A lot of people do it differently. For angle, they've got angle mode permanently enabled. Very clever. I like angle mode to be on this switch here in the middle position. That's going to be aux three. In the middle position, it's going to be angle. Uh, I like to have turtle mode or flip crash mode enabled. That lets you flip the quadcopter over if it is. Uh, upside down and you can't get to it or you don't want to walk over to it. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hit add range. Then I'm going to move the switch and it's going to fill in the aux channel. I'm going to put the switch in the downward position and I'm going to drag this so it covers that tick mark so that the switch going in the down position will activate flip crash mode. And uh, we're almost done. we got flip crash, angle mode, and acro mode will be just without angle mode active. Get that. I'm going to also want the beeper. I like to put that on this shoulder switch here. Beep GPS sat count. That's cute. Where's the beeper? There it is. I'm going to hit add range. I'm going to move that switch. It's going to fill in aux four as the channel that moved. That switch is going to be pulled towards me. I'm going to look at where the tick mark is and I'm going to move it to cover that tick mark. And that switch position will then activate the beeper. Perfect. And one more thing, we need GPS rescue. I like GPS rescue to be on this face switch. That's why, why not? That's just how my switches are set up. I try and keep my switch set up consistent across all of my quadcopters. And I recommend that you do the same just so your fingers know where everything is. So that's, we're gonna just set that to auto and move the switch. 
that picks up that that switch is controlling aux 2 and we're going to put that in the down position and that will activate gps rescue which is already where this little um where this is i'm gonna hit save okay there my switch modes are set up um i'm gonna go back to the fail safe tab here again i don't know why i'm gonna set all my aux channels to hold I don't know why they do this. It shouldn't be necessary because failsafe is already set to GPS rescue. So it, once you failsafe, it doesn't matter what aux channel position is. It'll, it'll, it's, that is the failsafe behavior. Sorry if this is confusing, but there, I've seen two quads set up this way where they set the aux channel to manually trigger the switch and it should not be necessary to manually trigger the switch when a failsafe happens. The aux channels no longer matter because you're in failsafe and failsafe behavior takes over. And if I'm wrong about that, then my quad's gonna fly away or fall out of the sky and I'll feel dumb, but I don't think that's how it works. That's not how it should work. We are now ready to put the props on and go outside and try to fly it. But that is gonna be a topic for another video. Thank you so much for following along. If you would like a little bit more in depth version of this same thing, I've got a tutorial where I set up the GEPRC rocket light it's the exact same situation. It's a quad with an air unit in it and the DJI controller. And it was just, uh, I took a little more time because I wasn't quite as much of a hurry. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the end card at the end of this video. And you can go check that, that out if you'd like to. Um, yeah, let me go fly. Happy flying. What are you still doing here? The video's over. You watch all the videos all the way to the end? Wow, you are a super fan. Thank you. That actually helps the channel a lot when you watch the videos all the way to the end. YouTube loves that. You know what else YouTube loves? When you subscribe or when you join my Patreon for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned. Actually, YouTube doesn't like you to join my Patreon. They don't get a cut of that.